Well, good morning. Welcome to Westside. My name is Caleb Klinger. I am the student ministry director. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Uh, it is my incredible privilege to be able to kick off a series that we're calling RVs, Recreation Vehicles. And, it, and it's, it's just a little bit of a jab at Casey while he's on sabbatical because he loves to RV. And so when we were planning this series and we were developing what we were going to talk about and we landed on this, this topic and, and this title, he was just like, you guys are so mean. I'm going to be gone and you're talking about RVs. But we're, we are talking about recreation vehicles and, and we're talking today about enjoying God, enjoying God. And I think we need to start with some foundational things. I think, I think it's good to just, just look at some of the foundational beliefs that we have uh, about God. And the, the first one is this, that God has created all things. God has created all things. This is a foundational belief that, that we believe here at Westside, that God is the author and, and creator of all things. You, we have the Genesis account of creation in our Bibles, and it's such a cool uh, story. It's actually a poem that, that talks about God's burst of creativity as he, as he develops and he in, invents and he shows this incredible creative side as he puts time and energy into his creation, which is the world around us. And, and so we see that our God is a creator. He is able to make something out of nothing. And in fact, Paul talks about uh, creation in his letter that he wrote to the Colossian church. He talks about creation through the lens of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us. And so if you follow along, Colossians 1, 15 through 17. The Son is the image of God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And so this is a foundational belief of the church, of the early church and of our church, that God has created everything. God is a creator. He is, he is an incredible creative being that, that wants to continue to create. The second thing that we look at is that God has created us in his image. Now, I've heard this growing up in Sunday school. I've heard this uh, throughout my life growing up in the church. But, but it strikes me that I, I think we kind of pass over this thought too quickly because it's really a profound Thought. It's really quite an amazing uh, uh, thing that, that we are created in God's image. And, and it came to mind when, when I got into a debate with someone about humanity's intrinsic value. That because we believe in God as a creator and we believe that God has created humanity in his own image, that we are able to see the innate value of humans. That we are able to look at the people around us, the people who are, are walking this, this life with us in relationship with Jesus and the people that are far from God. The people that are going through incredible struggles, that are going through sicknesses, we can see that, that all of humanity has this incredible value because they are created in God's image. And, and to, to say that we are created in the image of God, that we're created as a, as a reflection of this incredibly powerful God is quite an amazing thing. It's a ponderous thought that, that we have this responsibility because we are created in his image to reflect him to reflect his values and, and, and to reflect how he sees his creation because we're created in his image. And he's given us this, this minute portion of his personality and abilities and gives all of humanity this intrinsic value. And then we see that God has created us with faculties to experience the world around us. You see, we're all created with, with faculties, whether it be our, our physical senses, whether it be our emotions or our intellect, our logic, our reasoning. 
uh, whether it be our humor, whether it be uh, the, the things that, that we are able to experience with people in, in, in community, in relationship, that God has created us. In fact, he has hardwired these things into us so that we get to experience the world around us. But the cool thing is, is that we are unique creations among all of us. All of us are unique apart from each other. And so we get to see how other people experience life. We get to see how they get, how they get to experience the things that, that happen around them. We get to, to hear and we get to process and, and, and just experience how others see the world around us. Because God has created us in such an incredible, unique way that, that gives us the opportunity to see the world in a different way. And God has created us with, with things that, that don't really make a lot of biological sense when it comes to experiencing the world around us. Like these, these senses of awe and wonder that, that, we, that we experience when we see something that, it, that is incredible or a beautiful vista or that, that, that God has hardwired this into us so that we get to enjoy his creation and enjoy God through his creation. Because God has created us with unique abilities to enjoy creation. Now, for me, like one of the things I really enjoy doing is rock climbing. Uh, I also uh, have been skydiving once, which was really fun. But like there are certain things that I'm sure you think about how you enjoy creation. It's different for each person. And so the things that you go out to enjoy creation and to enjoy God through creation are unique to you, that, that, that you get to have these unique experiences because of how God has created you. And he's given us all different abilities and, and different talents that we are, are able to use to enjoy his creation, which leads us into the, our teaching big idea today. I am created by God to enjoy God. You see, all this leads into this this statement that that we are created, we are hardwired into our beings, into our physical beings, into our emotional beings, into our spiritual beings to enjoy God through the experiences that we see around us, through his world, through his creation, through the people in our lives. That all of it is leading towards enjoying God. Because we are created to experience the world around us, we get to discover who God is through his creation. And ultimately, we get to enjoy God through creation. But what's interesting is that, uh, you know, in the past 50 years, scientists have looked into uh, hum- the human's need for connection. And they're able to, to, to say without a doubt that humans actually have an innate need for connection. That it is hardwired into our being. That we need connection. And in fact, lack of connection can actually lead to death. And so when we look at that, we, we, we see that our, our need for connection exists. Because of our need for connection and relationship, we can also see how we are created to connect to God. If we're created in God's image, then God has put that, that need for connection in us because it's something that he himself wants. He wants to connect with us. He wants us to, to have this connection with him so that we can enjoy him. And maybe this is a, a, a different way of viewing your relationship with God. Maybe this is a different thought for you. Maybe it's something that, that you once had a, a good connection with God. That you can look back in your life and say, there, there was this time where I was really enjoying God. And maybe it's the time that you're going through right now. I don't know. But, but I hope that you see the truth of this. That, that we are designed to connect with God to enjoy God. And so to enjoy God, there are a few things that I think r- ring true for each and every one of us. To enjoy God, we must chase after God in all areas of our life. To enjoy God, we have to chase after God in all areas of our life. 
What this means is that, that we put God at the front of everything that we are doing, everything that we are pursuing, God becomes the forefront of that. That, that we, are, we are dedicating our life to put God first. See, God has to be where you are going to enjoy him. Because if you want to enjoy God, but you are chasing after wealth, or you're chasing after happiness, maybe you're chasing after a relationship, maybe you're chasing after sex, maybe you're chasing after something that, that just you want to numb your pain with, then you're not going to come into a relationship where you can actually fully enjoy God. God has to be at the forefront of your life in order to come into an area of your life where you get to truly enjoy God. Romans 12, Paul talks about this when he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You see, Paul says you have to be willing to offer your bodies as a sacrifice, putting aside all the things that you might desire from your selfish, sinful nature. You have to present your bodies as this living sacrifice, putting God first, saying, God, I am willing to put everything else aside and focus on you. Paul says it's your true and your proper worship. He goes on to say, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, his warning is that we shouldn't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Because this is so relevant because the world is so good at telling us what we need to chase after. The world is so good at telling us what we need in our lives in order to be happy, right? Like trillions of dollars are spent a year on telling you what you need in your life. Whether it's the new job, the bigger salary, the bigger car, the bigger house, there is so much time and energy spent on telling you what you need. And Paul's warning rings true to us today that we cannot be conformed to the pattern of the world. Instead, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And one of the ways that we can do that To enjoy God, we need to be intimately connected to his word. To enjoy God, we need to be intimately connected to his word. We need to have a solid understanding of who God is and what he has revealed to humanity in scripture. You see, we have this miraculous book called the Bible that has been preserved for thousands of years. And in it, God has revealed himself through history to humanity. That in it, we get to discover who God is, what he has done for us, and discover principles on how we should live. And it's nothing short of a miracle that we have this book of instruction that guides us in our relationship with God. So we need to be intimately connected because we need to to be digging into the word. We need to be... dissecting and and digesting the word so that we can have that connection to God because it's God revealing himself through history to us. We also need to be intimately connected to his church. To enjoy God, we need to be intimately connected to his church. You see, we cannot separate ourselves from his bride, the church, and enjoy God. Community plays a vital role in enjoying God. Community with Christ followers, community with believers, plays such an incredible role in how he is working and how he is moving in the lives of people around us. And for the longest time, I grew up thinking the church was the destination, that, that the church on Sunday was a destination that it was this building that we went to, and it was there that, that I got to see the church. But as I grew older and more mature, I realized something, that the church on Sunday isn't a destination because the church isn't a building. 
The church on Sunday should be this launch pad for us to move into the week where we get to show people what church really is. Where we get to see that that the, the community of Christ followers, the community of believers working and living and playing and moving through our neighborhoods and through our friendships, through our family, that that's the church. That's the church at work. And that's, that's so important for, for us to enjoy God is that we have to understand that, that if we're coming into this Sunday for an hour and we think this is where I'm going to get, this is the end all be all, this is where I'm going to get everything that I need, then you're looking at the church in the wrong way. Because the church is not just an hour on Sunday. This isn't the destination. This is a launch pad. This is fantastic. I love Sunday church. I love coming together as a big family, as a big community. I love that we get to worship corporately. It's so awesome to be able to come together and express our love for Jesus together. It's so awesome to look at all the faces here, to, to, to view the people that are watching online, that are coming together to express our love and our devotion to Jesus. But it can't stop here. It's got to continue through the week. The church has to continue through Monday through Saturday because that's how we become these vehicles to show the world what enjoying God actually means, to showing, showing the people around us, the people who are far from God, what it means to enjoy God. The church you need to be intimately connected to is the church at work Monday through Saturday, in your homes, in your friendships, at your jobs, where you go to relax. The people that you talk to, that's where you should see the church at work. That's why, that's why we put this emphasis on groups, because groups are a, an easy connection to the church that is at work through the week. They're an easy way to get plugged into a Christ-centered community of believers that can encourage you, that can challenge you, that, that can bring about this incredible enjoyment of what God is doing in and around our neighborhoods, in and around our communities. That's why we have this emphasis, because we understand that, uh, you know, if I only have you here for an hour on Sunday, and that's all the time you spend thinking about the church, then that's, that's not the way that God intended it. That's not the way that God wants you to live. He wants you to go from here inspired to live a life that is devoted to him, where he is at the forefront of everything that you're doing, where you are digging into his word to, to discover who he is and to be connected with a community of believers throughout the week. And it's, we, we get to get connected into a Christ-centered community of believers who are on mission for Jesus. Who, people who are loving Jesus, becoming like Jesus, and sharing Jesus with the world around them. And, and when you do that, you, begin to, you get to begin to enjoy God in a brand new way. And, and continue on in Colossians, Paul talks about Jesus in the, in the church, and he says, and he, referring to Jesus, is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. You see, the crux of all of this is Jesus. Everything hinges on Jesus. Because you can write this in, Jesus came to give us an intimate relationship with God. And it's through Jesus that we, are, we begin to enjoy God in a brand new way, that we are recreated in a brand new way. Our relationship with Jesus opens us up to enjoying God in a way that is unimaginable and inexplainable. Jesus makes it possible to enjoy God no matter what our circumstances may be. Jesus allows us to have contentment and gratitude in every circumstance, in every situation. It's through 
Jesus. And that's what our series Big Idea is talking about. The series that we're talking about, Recreation Vehicles. Jesus recreates us so that we live to glorify God. You see, Jesus makes us new. Jesus makes us into these new creatures, these new beings that are uniquely designed and equipped to enjoy God. We've been recreated into something so radically different than before so that our lives truly reflect who God is to the world around us. And we are made new through his love that is pouring out of us. We're made through made new through his sacrifice and through his resurrection. You see, through Jesus, we are uniquely equipped to use our gifts, talents, and faculties to enjoy God. It's through Jesus that we are uniquely equipped to use our gifts, talents, and faculties to enjoy God. And what's interesting is that I'm not just talking about the people that, that use that on Sunday morning. It's not just the band that's, that's playing the instruments. It's not just the people that, that are serving. Yes, they're using their gifts to glorify God, but, but, but to really enjoy God, you have to understand what gifts he has given you. You see, when Jesus ascended into heaven, he told the disciples that he was sending something better than him. Better than him. And it was the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit, he has given us the Holy Spirit, which equips us to experience God in a brand new way, as well as share him through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit that we discover the calling and the gifts and talents that God has placed in our life that we are able to use to glorify him. And it's not just the Sunday. It's not just the gifts that you see on, on display on Sunday, but it's the, the organizational gifts that you have at your job Monday through Friday. It's, it's the compassion that God has placed on your heart to, to care for the lost and the last and the least. It, it, it might be the, the ability to make money. That is a gift. That, that If God has given you that, then you need to direct it and, and use it for his glory. Maybe, maybe it's the entrepreneurial spirit of, of creating something out of nothing. You have to recognize that God has given us all unique gifts and abilities so that we get to enjoy God through those. You see, the Holy Spirit moves us out of our comfort zone into new experiences where we gain a new and different perspective on God. The Holy Spirit directs us in ways we can never imagine, allows us opportunities to enjoy God that we, we sometimes can't even describe. And it's important to recognize that the Holy Spirit is able to move and work through you so that you can begin to enjoy God in a way you may not have known before. Paul talks about the Holy Spirit in Colossians 3 as he as he continues on in this letter that he's writing to this church. He says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I know several of you recognize the, the fruits of the Spirit there. That these are the ways that we are able to express to a world around us who God is and what God has done for us. He continues and he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And I love this verse. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You see, Paul says, whatever it is that you do, if you... If you are following Jesus, if you are on this journey with Jesus, whatever it is you do, that means everything, whether in word or deed, no matter what it is, whatever you do, 
Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You see, when we live a life that fully enjoys God, we are a vehicle for his glory to the world around us. That when we adopt this mantra of doing everything for Jesus, that no matter what it is that we are doing in life, even if it's the most menial task, that we have God at the forefront, that we place God at the front of our lives, and that we are doing it for Jesus, we begin to fully enjoy God, and we become this vehicle that shares his glory to the world around us. So how can you begin to more easily and readily enjoy God? What circumstances are you going through right now that are preventing you from having that contentment and that gratitude for everything that God has done for you? What are the things that are preventing you from taking your next step into your relationship with Jesus? What is preventing you from moving into a a time in your life where you can say that you are fully enjoying it is that we are doing, that we are going to do it for Jesus, because through that, we get to become this this vehicle of his recreation power. We get to show people what it means to be a new creation. We get to show people that no matter what life throws at us, no matter the hard struggles that we're going through, no matter the circumstances, that we have contentment and gratitude. That we are enjoying God no matter what. In 2 Corinthians 5, Paul's writing to a church in Corinth and, and he starts this by saying, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Guys, the ministry of reconciliation is that recreation that happens. It's because of God and what Jesus has done on the cross that we are able to become these new creatures. And he's given us that message to the world around us. He's given it to us so that we can spread his love, so that we can talk to a a world that is far from God to help reconcile people back into relationship with him so that we can become these vehicles for his recreation power to the world around us. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. I love that word. I am so glad Paul used that word because I could preach on that that sentence right there, that we are Christ's ambassadors. It's such a dignified, important word ambassador. And that's us. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So I've asked the band to come out and they're going to play a song. And I want this song to be the benediction for you. I want this song to be a benediction that inspires you to go out into this world, to go out into your jobs, to go out into your families, 
and to be this vehicle of recreation power to the world around you. I want it to inspire you to begin to enjoy God in a new way by putting him first in your life, by digging into his word to discover who he is and what he has done for you. to enjoy God in a brand new way because he has recreated us into something new. So the band's going to play. Our prayer partners will be available during this time. And after the band is done, you're free to go. You're free to go out into the world. Leave this launch pad and be the church. Enjoy God. Show who God is to the world.